Let's look at how energy moves from one trophic level to the next. We actually can put some equations on all this stuff and talk about the efficiency of energy transfer, which is a product of the efficiencies with which organisms exploit their food resources and turn them into their own biomass. So the standing crop of whatever we're talking about, often people talk about plants this way, but it can be any kind of organism, is the biomass present at a given time in a unit area. We can think of standing crops of anything because after all, all living things are resources for other living things. But let's think about now how plants and animals are different. Much of what makes up a plant is carbon because plant cells have a lot of cellulose and lignin in them and cellulose is a polymer of glucose and because of this plant leaves, plant parts have high fiber content which is mostly undigestible and unus unusable for most organisms as energy. Because of this, plants have a very high carbon to nitrogen ratio ranging from 20 to 1 to 40 to 1 carbon to nitrogen. In contrast, other organisms are 8 to 1 to 10 to 1, bacteria, fungi, detritivores, plant eaters, and meat eaters. So herbivores eating plants whether those plants are dead or alive, are eating food that's very rich in carbon and poor in protein or nitrogen. So the transition to make that food they're eating into something they can make their own tissues out of requires a big burn off of carbon as that carbon to nitrogen ratio is lowered. Because of this, the main waste products of herbivores are very heavy in carbon. They excrete fiber and carbon dioxide. So how does an animal compare to a plant as a package of food? Herbivores, things that eat plants, and their consumers are quite similar in composition. Carnivores obtain their energy mostly from eating protein and fats, and because of this their main waste products are rich in nitrogen. So a lot of you are good athletes and I want us to talk about what's the best diet for long distance runners and short distance runners. Remember the birthday cake setup of the energy and biomass pyramids. This is because only 5% to 20% of energy passes from one trophic level to the next up. And this depends on net primary production at the base of the food chain by the photosynthetic organisms and the efficiencies of transfer between trophic levels. Of the light energy assimilated by plants, they use from 15% to 70% for maintenance. So a lot of that is used up and they only grow using about 10 to 20 percent. In comparison, herbivores and carnivores expend even more on maintenance than plants do. So in general, the production of each trophic level is only 5 to 20 percent that of the level below it. So ecological efficiency or food chain efficiency is the percentage of energy transferred from one trophic level to the next. And we can see each of these green boxes as a trophic level and the energy coming in through ingestion and assimilated. Some is put into production and growth and other excreted but a large portion in respiration for just simple maintenance and metabolism. Then that amount of energy goes to the next trophic level and these compartments get smaller and smaller. 
So what are the components of energy transfer? Intratrophic, that means within a trophic level. There's ingestion, taking the food in. Egestion, and this refers to indigestible parts that are regurgitated or perhaps coming out the other end. Different from excretion, which is the energy content of the organic wastes, assimilation refers to the energy content of the food that's digested and absorbed. Respiration is energy that's consumed for maintenance. And then finally there's production, the residual energy that's left for growth and reproduction. So a simple way to look at an animal's energy budget is ingested energy minus egested energy is equals the assimilated energy and then of that energy assimilated we have from that we have to subtract respiration and excretion energy and what we're left with is production in other words how much of the energy in the biomass of the food item goes into making the tissues of the eater or the next trophic level. So the proportions of net primary productivity that go up each energy pathway depend on transfer efficiencies. And we can look at exploitation or consumption efficiency. Sometimes this is called EE or CE. Assimilation efficiency, AE and production efficiency, PE. Exploitation efficiency or consumption efficiency is figured by ingestion divided by prey production or available amount of prey times 100%. So what proportion of the available prey energy or biomass is being consumed? The exploitation efficiencies of herbivores are all pretty low, less than 10% for many, but it can range from 8 to 40%. We know less about the exploitation efficiencies of carnivores feeding on prey, probably because they are more mobile, maybe 50 to 100%, or depending on the amount of prey available, could be lower than that. Next comes assimilation efficiency which is the percent of food energy taken into the guts of the consumers assimilated across the gut wall, therefore available for growth and metabolism. The rest is lost as wastes, either egestion or excretion, whatever, and to decomposers. AE is equal to assimilation over ingestion, <clears throat> times a hundred percent times a hundred. So AEs are low for herbivores, detritivores, and microbivores, twenty to fifty percent, and in general higher for carnivores, more than fifty percent. This is because assimilation efficiency is a function of food quality, and different parts of plants have different. Uh, nutrient or energy content, a pr proportion of proteins and lipids make them higher quality, so that seeds are 80% assimilated. Young vegetation, like new leaves, soft, not too fibrous yet, 60 to 70%. The plant foods of grazers and browsers, tougher leaves, little branches and stems, 30 to 40%. And those herbivores that eat decaying wood assimilate only about 15%. Contrast these with the assimilation of animal food, 60 to 90%, and you can see that only seeds and maybe some tender new leaves are on par for the proportion that is assimilated by the eaters. Then there's net production efficiency, which is equal to production divided by assimilation times 100. This is the percent of assimilated energy incorporated into new biomass. The remainder is lost as respiratory heat. And this net production efficiency varies a lot. Invertebrates, insects and 
aquatic invertebrates have relatively high production efficiency, 30 to 40 percent. Vertebrates is in general much lower, 10 percent or less, and greater for poikilotherms than homeotherms. Small body, bodied homeotherms or endotherms have the lowest production efficiencies of all, maybe because they have to expend so much energy. And that of microorganisms, the production efficiency is very high in contrast. So let's do some problems with what we know about this. If we assume that starting with 100 energy units of plant materials, the insect that eats those plants has a net production efficiency of 40%. The lizard that eats that insect has net production efficiency of 10%. The bird that eats the lizard, NPE of 2%. And the panther that eats the bird, 2%. How much of the energy that, of that original 100 energy units, grams or whatever, is put into the tissues of the highest trophic level, in this case, the panther. So this net production efficiency, how much of what an organism eats is actually put into its tissues, depends a lot on metabolic activity. Birds have a very low net production efficiency because they expend a lot of energy flying around, finding their food. Small mammals, like mice and rats, may have... a much higher, 6%, but this is much less than sedentary, cold-blooded animals like an alligator, let's say, who may have up to 75% net production efficiency. So in general, the bigger the homeotherm, the greater the production efficiency. And with poikilotherms and ectotherms, production efficiency is inversely correlated. Last of all, there's gross production efficiency. This looks at how much energy goes into new biomass over the amount that was originally ingested rather than the net, which was over the amount assimilated. So this is a measure of overall efficiency of biomass production within a trophic level. For warm-blooded terrestrial animals, cows, cats, and dogs. This is usually less than 5%. Birds and large mammals can have gross production efficiency of less than 1%. For insects, it's higher, and probably the highest of all we can see in some aquatic animals, like the good old manatee. So overall, ecological efficiency, and I guess we used EE for exploitation efficiency, that's why we should have used CE for consumption efficiency, is equal to EE, consumer efficiency, times assimilation efficiency, times net production efficiency. In other words, the production of consumers over the production of prey. The greater the overall efficiency of energy transfer, the more trophic levels can be supported and the longer the food chain or food web. In the open ocean is where we find the longest food chains. This is because even though productivity is low, ecological efficiency is high. In grasslands, these are shorter, shorterer it says here, and shorter still in tropical forests where there's great productivity but low ecological efficiency. So there was a, an influential book written in the 1970s the, by Francis Moore LaPay called Diet for a Small Planet, in which, which she advocated a vegetarian diet as an easy solution for world hunger. So I want you to think about how can this change provide more food for more people. If we think about the general rules of this energy exchange, we know that assimilation efficiency increases at the higher trophic levels. 
net and gross production efficiencies decrease. And if ecological efficiency averages about 10% per trophic level, about 1% of net production of plants ends up as production new tissues on the third trophic level. This is because the pyramid of energy narrows quickly. So it seems simple to conclude that to increase human food supplies, we could all eat lower on the food chain at least most of the time.